Okay, good morning, everyone. And this is lab four. Uh, open the lab instructions and notice the uh, deliverables first. I right? need soft copy of the drawing into D2L Dropbox, cover sheet, same as we have done with the assignment one. With sign off, so it'll be one uh, demonstration. There'll be no completed, and uh, because this is one, just one drawing that you can do completely. So now what we're doing today, we're doing this drawing. And it's made up of two PLC modules. This is an input module, and this is an output module. This is a 24 volts DC power supply. And then we have input devices. All of them are discrete devices, on and off. And output devices, which are coils and lamps. So we have two coils, one forward and one reverse. This is actually a motor control, uh, forward and reverse. Now what you see here is a picture of a ladder logic. This is the way we program PLCs, or at least one of the popular ways. There are other languages, but the most popular is this one. Another, another way to program PLCs is called functional blocks. But uh, of course, at this stage, you're not doing programming. So I gave you a picture in, in, uh, uh, in, um, on, on, the, on the web site for the course, you will find a ladder image that you need to use. Basically, I will show you as, as we go along. We need to take it with uh, Microsoft Paint, copy it, and then bring it to, um, to the program. Now, what you see here, we've got some red lines and some blue lines. The red lines are all positive 24 volts because we've got positive terminal and negative terminal. And the negative terminal going to various locations. So the field devices, on the input side, one side of the field device, input device, is connected to a terminal. Notice the terminal numbers, uh, or terminals have numbers. So this is terminal zero, terminal one, and so on. And another side is connected to the positive uh, 24 volts DC. What else? We also have a negative terminal. So this input module has two COM1 and COM2, so two terminals that need to be connected to the negative. We're only connecting the upper one because we're only using the upper half of the terminals. If you're using any of the lower half, you need to use this. And I can tell you now, students, when they, when they actually wire the PLC in the lab, if they forget, and many of them, well, a number of them do, okay, and they forget connecting the, the negative, Nothing works. Okay, and then, and then on the output module, we actually have two connections. One is positive, so there is po positive power supply to the module itself, and negative, plus, of course, the output devices. So let's get started. Uh, of course, I want to also uh, call your attention to these illustrations. Well, these illustrations are basically extracts from the PLC manufacturer user guide. So the manufacturer of the PLC that we're using is uh, formerly Alan Bradley. It's now Rockwell Automation. Of course, two things I want you to pay attention to in these pictures. First is the module number. Yeah, Abdullah. The module number. Secondly, this is so um, also it shows you the physical layout, how the module is physically laid out. Whereas in uh, AutoCAD, everything is looking linear. Okay, in the in the drawing, the drawing is not necessarily a depiction of the physical layout, but that's okay, right? So the first module is an input module. It's called seven, uh, the module uh, number, which AutoCAD has got realistic components built in. So we're going to call these components. You're not going to draw the whole thing. You're just going to pull it and use it. So the first module we're going to look at for is 1769IQ16. And the second one is this one. It's an output module, 
OB16P. Okay, so without much um, delay, let's get started. So what I want you to do, as I said, you need to start a new drawing using the template provided on the course website. So I'm going to the location where the template is stored, lab four, and here it is, lab four template. So that's where we're starting. Again, if you check the, uh, the drawing units, we're using Imperial. And as you see, inches here, not millimeters as we have been doing so far, which is fine. And there's a good reason for that. It has to do with scale. But uh, for electrical drawings, we're not so much concerned about scale as we were in architectural drawings and dimensions and so on. We were more concerned about scale there. But here, we're more concerned about the electrical details. Okay, let's get started. What I want you to do is go to the schematic. That everyone is okay with me? All right, so let's go to schematic. Schematic tab, and then we'll hit icon menu. And this window should open up for you. Follow me step by step so that you can understand what I what, what needs to be done to get these modules. Everyone okay with me on this step? Okay, now you need, there's one icon here that says PLC IO, which is inputs and outputs. So you click it, and then you've got a number of possibilities. I want you to, the first one, top left, PLC IO modules. Click it, and this opens up. Now you may have something like this to begin with, right? So these are manufacturers of various PLCs. The one we want is Alan Bradley. Click on the plus sign. And then look for 1769. Click on the plus sign. 1769. Click on the plus sign. And then look for discrete input. Click it first so you can see the plus sign. Then click on the plus sign. Here's the one we're looking for. 1769-IQ16. That's the one we've seen in, on the lab instructions. Everyone okay until here? Okay. So you just say okay. And then you got this. Now, we want to keep it a little bit off, but we can make adjustments later on. Yes, Yanur? Yeah, 